Following the Battle of Pavia, the French army was left crushed and leaderless, as the flower of the French nobility was dead or captured, and the king was in enemy hands. Although Charles V was now the strongest ruler in Italy, and had nearly every advantage he could wish for, he still had many challenges ahead of him. The Lutheran faith spreading in Germany, and the encroachment of the Ottomans, forced him to conclude an unsatisfactory agreement with his rival, which meant that the Italian wars would continue their destructive course, dragging on the destruction of Italy. Don't settle for messy and unsatisfactory results like this. When you want a piece of something, albeit more in terms of food than pieces of Italy, slice it off nice and clean with a blade from our sponsor Kamikoto. Kamikoto utilize 800 years of traditional techniques to handcraft knives using exclusively high-quality Japanese steel and a stunning satin finish, delivered in a beautiful heavy-duty ashwood box, ideal for presenting as a gift. Kamikoto knives are used by several chefs working at Michelin star restaurants. Even we amateurs can see why. The blades they sent us were perfectly balanced, easy and comfortable to use, and cut through everything we ever wanted. The single bevel edge blade is super sharp, so while you can't actually carve out yourself some Italian territory, you'll do better than you would have with inferior knife designs. All knives in Kamikoto's range are individually inspected after a several year long production process, and they're so confident in the result that they offer a lifetime guarantee. And the good news is you can get them seriously discounted right now, both thanks to their Black Friday sale event, and because you can use our code KINGS at kamikoto.com kings to get a further 50 US dollars off any purchase that you make. Get a great knife, a great gift, and support our channel. Links are in the description. With the capture of Francis, and the French army making their way through the Alps, the mother of the king and regent, Louise of Savoy, prepared the defences of the kingdom and prepared to negotiate the release of her son. Charles requested the renunciation by the French monarchy of any claim over Flanders, Artois, Milan and Naples, and the relinquishing of Burgundy, requests deemed excessive and humiliating by Francis. The emperor had been cautious and did not take any other military action following his victory, but the Italian states still worried over the excessive power that the emperor had. Calling for a revival of the 14th century system of Italian balance among the states, and a renaissance of Italian pride, the Venetians sought to form a new league by using the anger towards the arrogant imperial envoys who demanded money and quartering of troops. The Pope refused, threatened by the Gilibines, and instead reached an agreement with Charles, but the young Duke of Milan, Francesco Sforza, intended to join in as he worried that he would become a satellite state of Charles and be burdened by the upkeep of the many soldiers in his borders. However, the conspiracy was uncovered and the castle of Milan was occupied by the Spanish forces. The situation was complicated by the death of Fernando de Velos in December of 1525, leaving a vacuum in the imperial leadership. In March of 1526, Francis was set free in exchange for giving up the previously mentioned claims and the Duchy of Burgundy. Although the Spanish had taken his sons as hostages, Francis refused to ratify the treaty and opened up diplomatic channels with the Italian states and England. Charles, short of funds, could not react militarily, and on the 22nd of May 1526, the Holy League of Cognac was formed by France, the Pope, Venice, Milan and Florence. The League was technically open for Charles, as its goal was officially to repel the Ottomans and the Protestant Reformation, although one condition was to acknowledge the autonomy of the Italian states. Knowing that the Emperor could not accept this condition, Clement and Venice attacked preemptively. The Venetian and Papal forces, commanded by Francesco Maria della Rovere, advanced in June with 22,000 men, occupying Lodi first and then reaching the walls of Milan to assist the Duke. The Duke of Bourbon, however, managed to reinforce the city before them, and although the League had double the men, and the citizens of Milan had rebelled against the Imperials, their commander decided to retreat to the astonishment of his subordinates. The Duke of Urbino excused himself, blaming the lack of a promised Swiss incursion from the north. 
to show some kind of result, he then took his army to Cremona, which was captured in September. Left alone, Francesco Sforza reached an agreement with his besiegers and surrendered his castle. The League's cohesion took a hit in September. Pope Clement had attempted to subvert the imperial-friendly governments of Genoa and Siena, but he suffered imperial retaliation by Colonna, who entered the Eternal City and sacked some neighborhoods on the 20th of September. Clement, now besieged in Castel Sant'Angelo, had to agree to a truce and recalled his troops. Meanwhile, the 16,000-strong Imperial Landsconnect army entered Italy in November. The League's army was by this point crumbling, but Giovanni delle Bandinere took up the task of harassing the contingent and keeping it from reaching Milan. He was partially successful and forced them south, but the rulers of Mantua and Este helped the Germans with supplies and artillery. While the Germans crossed the Po River at Cavenolo, the cavalry of the De Medici engaged their rearguard, but the League's soldiers were surprised by the enemy artillery and Giovanni perished. The Germans and Imperials in Milan joined up in February, and in March 1527, had an army of over 30,000 men. However, Bourbon soon found it impossible to manage the hungry troops, who continued to move south even though Clement had signed a new truce. Meanwhile, Florence was reinforced by the League's armies, who quelled an anti-Medici revolt and coerced the Florentines to enter a new league with France and Venice. Bourbon's mutinous army ignored the strongly defended Florence and instead entered Latium lightning fast, reaching the walls of Rome on the 5th of May. Clement had dismissed most of his troops after the truce to not pay them, expecting that Charles would have recalled them or that Della Rivere would defend him. In Rome, there were only around 3,000 men under Renzo de Ceriosini, while the Imperials had been joined by deserters and brigands. On the dawn of the 6th, the Imperials, covered by a thick mist, invaded the old Leonine walls. A first assault was pushed back by Renzo de Cherry's volunteers, but at the second assault, they pushed through. Charles of Bourbon lost his life climbing the walls, shot by an arquebus. His death galvanized his men, who entered the Vatican and then spread through the city. Pope Clement, who was praying in St. Peter, barely managed to escape to Castel Sant'Angelo as his Swiss guard sacrificed themselves for him. After the Pope refused to compromise with them, the mercenaries divided up the city and started a sack that lasted weeks. No man or woman was spared, rape was common, people were tortured to extort money, and churches were ransacked. The concentration of men and the destruction of the sewer system started a plague that spared no one. From a population of 50,000, Rome was reduced to 30,000 because of deaths and refugees. The sack came as a total shock for the Italians and Europeans, and it would be a great stain on the legacy of Charles. The League's army arrived 15 days later, but soon after left, as the commanders saw it was impossible to save the Pope after a few skirmishes. In the Eternal City, no one among the Imperial commanders wanted to take responsibility for the mercenaries, as more men piled into the looting and the soldiers were without control. Clement finally surrendered, agreed to pay the Imperials 400,000 ducats and to give up a number of towns in his possession. Venice took control of Ravenna, and a coup in Florence overthrew the de' Medici government. Some imperial soldiers still refused to leave. Many had been struck by the plague or left the city with loot, but others were still waiting for their payment, and only by the start of 1528 the city was rid of mercenary presence. Charles in Spain ordered to free Clement, but had little sway over his troops in Italy, and the Pope had to cough up more money and hostages to be freed and later escaped from mercenary custody. Following the sack of Rome, France and England scrambled to form an alliance. In August, Francis financed another army to be sent into Italy under the Count of Lautrec. The Spanish commander at Milan, de Leva, had already struggled to keep his men in line and repelled a number of attacks, but now faced a greater threat from the west. The French took Genoa, Alessandria, and brutally sacked Pavia, 
as a punishment for the resistance in 1525. Instead of going to Rome, Lautrec opted to attack the imperial supply base of Naples and marched along the Adriatic coast, entering the Kingdom of Naples in February 1528. After taking control of Abruzzo, the Transalpines pushed into Apulia, where they were followed by an imperial army under Orange and began to besiege Naples. This would prove to be a disaster, as the lack of supplies and the spread of disease took its toll on the French army. During the siege, a naval battle was fought at Capodosso and Andrea Doria switched his allegiance to the Imperials, while Lautrec died struck by the plague in August. This caused a general retreat of the men still strong enough to travel. Still, the war in Naples would continue for a year, as pockets of resistance in Abruzzo and Venetian-held cities in Apulia held out. Meanwhile, De Leva had continued his campaign around Milan, as another French contingent entered Piedmont and sacked Pavia once again. However, the French soon lost Genoa to Doria, who entered the port with a small contingent, striking at the French communication lines. Francis's army attempted to retake it, but sickness and lack of funds once again proved detrimental, making Genoa independent again following half a century of foreign rule, with Doria ruling it behind the scenes. For the next few months, only small skirmishes along the Genoese border and raids in Lombardy occurred culminating at the French defeat of Landriano. The monarchs of Europe were already holding talks to conclude this conflict. Charles clearly had the upper hand, but the threat of the Ottomans and the spread of Protestantism forced him to divide his resources. The Peace of Cambrai, signed on the 5th of August, was a repeat of the Peace of Madrid, with the exception that Charles dropped his claims on Burgundy and the French princes could be ransomed. Other states were not invited to the talks, and Francis's allies in Italy were left at the mercy of the emperor. Previously in June, Charles had concluded the Peace of Barcelona with the Pope. The emperor promised to give back Ravenna, Cervia, Medena, and Reggio, reinstated the Sforza in Milan, and the de' Medici in Florence as dukes. In exchange, the Pope confirmed the investiture of the Kingdom of Naples, made concessions on taxes of ecclesiastical property, and absolved the emperor for the sack of Rome. While the talks were ongoing, the emperor himself landed in Genoa with an army of 10,000 in August 1529, as he was still in conflict with Venice and Francesco Sforza, and hostilities did continue in the following months. However, Charles was not keen on prolonging the conflict, and with the support of the Pope, made peace with Francesco Sforza, who retained his duchy for a heavy cost, and Venice, who had to give up their conquests in Romagna and Apulia and pay reparations. After having been crowned King of Italy on the 24th of February 1530, Charles was crowned Emperor in Bologna by the Pope in an event full of allegories that were meant to sanction the hegemony of the Emperor all over Europe. Charles then left for Mantua, where he elevated the Gonzagas to dukes and confirmed the Este's possession of Medina and Reggio, and then to Germany to deal with the rebellious Protestants. In late 1532, Charles once again returned to Italy and met Clement in the Second Congress of Bologna, where he asked the Pope for a church council, which Clement refused to do in a short time frame, and for the formation of a league with the Pope and other Italian states. This league existed only on paper, as most states refused openly to contribute to it, as it was clearly just a tool to pay Spanish troops in Italy. Following the treaty, Charles was upholding his part of the bargain with Clement, and by October, his army under the Prince of Orange was besieging Florence, whose Savona-inspired Republican government had come to power following the sack of Rome. Despite the Prince's death, the Florentines were forced to give up in August of 1530. After a year of transitional government, in summer 1531, Alessandro de' Medici came to Florence with a decree from the Emperor that declared him the Duke of the Republic. He spent the following year wrestling for more power and influence against the aristocracy, but the era of the Italian Comuni and Republics had definitely ended. 
With the situation in Italy seemingly pacified, Charles V focused on other issues requiring his attention. He traveled to Germany to confront the Protestant Reformation that was gaining traction among many imperial princes who had formed the Schmalkaldic League, though not much came of his travel. Another important threat to his empire was the Ottoman Turks, who had conquered most of Hungary and in 1529 had reached the walls of Vienna, not to mention the high activity of the Barbary Corsairs in the Mediterranean waters. Charles himself led the expedition that conquered Tunis in 1535, one of the high points of his reign. Despite the failures of the previous years, Francis I still wanted to retake his possessions. He took every opportunity he could to obstruct Charles's hegemony, conspiring with the German Lutherans and formalizing contact with the Ottoman Sultan, stimulating offensives in Hungary and on the Mediterranean islands. He began to scheme with the Italian princes, and in November 1535, following the death of the Duke of Milan, Francesco Sforza, without an heir, went to war that ended in 1538, with the French occupying Savoy and Charles becoming the ruler of Milan. The Peace of Nice confirmed the status quo in Italy, with Francis allowed to keep his conquests. Discussions to arrive at a lasting peace through marriage continued the following year, when Charles travelled through France to the Netherlands, but no decision could be reached. In autumn, Charles went on an expedition in North Africa with the goal of conquering Algiers, but that campaign ended in a complete failure because of bad weather and stiff resistance. The financial and military situation the emperor found himself in, and the promised support of Suleiman, enticed Francis once again, so with the Casus Belli received by the murder of a French diplomat on Milanese soil, he declared war in June of 1542. In contrast to the previous wars, the Seventh Italian War did not have Lombardy as the main theatre. By this time, the conflict had evolved into a succession of European wars between the Habsburgs and the Valois over the dominance of the continent. The French military attacked at three points, to the south, an army under the Dauphin Henri and Claude Danebeau besieged Perpignan in Roussillon, but were repelled by relieving Castilian nobles. In the Netherlands, Charles Duke of Orléans briefly occupied Luxembourg, which was recaptured. In 1543, the offensive recommenced, with the Duke of Cleves and Ulich allying with France and attacking Brabant, while the French invaded Flanders, taking Lille and Londrossi. Charles, who had allied with Henry of England, soon responded by occupying the capital of Ulich, Durin, and besieged Londresy, but the French army relieved the garrison. In Piedmont, the conflict was more restrained, with Del Vesto going on the offensive with little success, and the theatre ended in a stalemate. In the summer of 1543, the Savoyard city of Nice was first besieged in July by a French fleet, repelled by Andrea Doria and in August by a combined French-Turkish fleet, which took and sacked the city. Charles of Savoy came to relieve the fortress in September, lifting the siege, and the Ottoman fleet spent the winter quartering in Toulon. The combined attack of Muslim and Christian forces and their wintering in a Christian port was scandalous for contemporaries, and Francis had to downplay the Turkish involvement. Del Vasto, after obtaining more money from his emperor, deviated north to attack some French positions, cutting off their communication lines. In the spring of 1544, under François de Bourbon, Count of Enghien, entered Piedmont and captured Carignano, previously captured by Del Vasto, and a thorn in the side for the French communications. As Del Vasto approached to relieve the town, he set up camp in the village of Cherisole, a few kilometers from his enemy. On the 14th of April, Bourbon moved to the village to confront him. Both armies lined up for battle around a plain without any obstacles, positioned on two small slopes. The exact number of troops is uncertain. It seems that the French had around 13 to 15,000 men, of which around 1,500 were light and heavy French-Italian cavalry, while the Imperials had either around the same number or slightly more at around 18,000 infantry and 1,000 cavalry. The two armies also had around 20 cannons. Both armies were divided up into three blocks of infantry, supported by three divisions of cavalry. 
The battle commenced, with both sides sending forward a few hundred arquebusiers and their cannons to try and gain a positional advantage and flank their adversaries. After the skirmish had been going on for a few hours, Del Vasto sent his Florentine light cavalry to wipe away the enemy shooters, but they were met by the enemy cavalry. At the same time, Del Vasto ordered all units to advance. The impetus of the French cavalry, under De Terme, was so strong that first it smashed the Florentines, who were driven back into the Italian infantry, and then they themselves cut deep into the Italians. The light cavalry was surrounded and had to surrender to the Italians, but it took some time for them to reorganize. Meanwhile, in the center, the lance connects of Del Vasto had to split up to confront both the Gascon and Swiss contingents of the French. The Gascons and Germans advanced with hand gunners in their second ranks, causing many casualties in the front ranks when they met. As the Germans advanced at a fast pace, they lost some of their cohesion. First, they crashed into the French, then the Swiss themselves charged into their enemies. The brutal pike-to-pike -pike combat was broken when French gendarmes flanked the Lansconnects and thrust it into their side, sending them reeling down the hill, while the Spanish men-at-arms were repelled by the Swiss after a single charge. On the left, the situation went worse for the French. Although their horse archers routed the Neapolese light cavalry, the units from Gruyere panicked when confronted by the Spanish and German veteran soldiers and ran away followed by the Italian contingent. Count Donguian and his men-at-arms, who were accompanied by 100 French nobles, charged the veterans three times, who killed many of his horses. The French general thought the day was lost, as he could not see the situation in other parts of the battlefield. However, the veterans began to retreat, having received news from the rest of the battlefield, and after the Swiss had massacred the Lansconnects in their retreat, they turned around and, with the Gascons, pursued the retreating veterans. Most of them, to not be slaughtered, threw their pikes to the ground and surrendered to the French knights, though many were killed without mercy. At the Battle of Terrasole, the Imperials lost around 6,000 to 7,000 men, and a further 3,000 were taken prisoner, while the French casualties were probably around 2,000. With the defeat of the Imperial Army at Cherisole, the way to Lombardy was wide open for the French. However, the Imperials were massing troops along the Rhine River, so no reinforcements could be sent. Del Vasto consolidated his position in Milan to defend the city, intercepted a contingent of Italian reinforcements, and defeated them at Cerevalle. The last event of the campaign in Piedmont was the surrender of Alba to the French, which was shortly followed by a truce. Meanwhile, a combined English and Imperial army invaded northern France in May 1544. The Imperials, after moderate success, were bogged down in the Siege of Saint-Dizier, while the English invaded Picardy and besieged Bologna. In August, Charles managed to take Saint-Dizier, but the strong resistance had halted his timetable. The Emperor decided to raid parts of Champagne, and concluded operations in September while Francis used a strategy of containment to limit the damage. On the 18th of September, 1544, the Peace of Crepy was signed between Francis and Charles. Returning to the status quo of the Peace of Nice, and a marriage proposal was arranged between a Habsburg princess and Charles d'Orléans, with either the Low Countries or Milan as her dowry. Charles was unsure whether to sacrifice Milan which had been so costly to defend, but at the same time was vital for the connection of his empire, or the more peripheral but hereditary lands of the Low Countries. Charles was more inclined to sacrifice the former, but the death of the Duke of Orléans the following year dissolved any need for a decision, so he invested his son Philip with the duchy. Although Charles made peace with Francis, the war continued between France and England. Henry besieged Bologna himself, and the town capitulated in September, ending the campaign for that year. Francis responded by invading the Isle of Wight in 1545, but was repelled. He also sent reinforcements to Scotland to continue the never-ending border skirmishes and besieged Bologna in the summer to retake it, an effort that ended in a stalemate. Neither party wanted to continue the war, 
so an agreement was reached in June 1546, leaving Bologna in Henry's hands. Both Henry and Francis died in 1547, succeeded by Edward VI and Henri II. The Italian wars would continue to spill over to the global scene, and our series on that will continue in the near future, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description to know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord and much more. This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.